Yeah, how's everybody doing? Yeah. You can do better than that. How you doing? Yeah. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Cool. Give it up for Mona for throwing this show. This is an awesome show. Uh, that's comedy bowl for your ass. That was like a combination recipe, motivational speaker, venting, yes. like uh, therapy type thing. Mama Mona, where you at? Here you? You're bad as hell. You cut all that shit up. It took you 45 minutes. <laughs> wow, you gotta meet my parents. Yeah, uh, yeah. I'm an I'm an old ass gangbanger. Um, don't tell nobody. <laughs> um, yeah, my cousin was Latin Kings back in the day. I actually got stabbed when I was 17 years old. Anybody here been stabbed? No, probably not. Right? You have who? Oh, are you looking to get stabbed? You pissing people off? Because when I got stabbed, that shit was not thug life at all. I fainted in front of everybody. That was embarrassing. You have no idea what it's like to come from a family of gangbangers, and you get into this big rumble, and you faint in front of everybody, and everybody scatters. <laughs> I'm bleeding from my arm. I stabbed three times. I'm bleeding from my arm, and everybody wants to take me to the hospital. I'm like, no, don't take me to the hospital. They ask questions. Let me put a Band-Aid on here and some Bactine. Remember Bactine? <laughs> yeah, that was embarrassing. And uh, that was the end of my gangbanging career. Very short. Um, I've been sober for 80 days. Yeah. Just not in a row. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, I know. Wow, I know. Tell me about it, bro. Uh, yeah, it's, it, you know what's weird? Um, alcohol, is, it's a little different. It's not like weed. I think the worst thing you do on weed is you'll pull up to a stop sign and you wait for the stop sign to turn green. <laughs> You guys got that front in the back, like, dude, that was awesome, bro. I love how that shit just turned blue. Like, dude, that's the cops. That's uh, that's a true story. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting. A um, little bit about me. Uh, what else? What else? I have three kids. Uh, no. Uh-uh. Uh, my son just turned 21 earlier this year. Yeah, you're not supposed to clap for that shit, don't. <laughs> it is a very interesting feeling when your son that's 21 orders alcohol in front of you. It is like the most beautiful, disrespectful thing you could ever have happen to you. We were sitting in the Buffalo Wild Wings. I ordered my beer, my, my food and everything. And then my son just orders right after me. Like, yeah, I have a tall middle light. They card him, bring him his beer. I'm like, hey man, uh, you know I'm in front of you, right? This shit is not cool. That was weird. We got drunk as hell that night. Um, <laughs> that was some interesting shit, considering I'm divorced. So we did a lot of sharing that night. Anybody here else divorced? Yeah? You guys are proud of that shit, too. Yeah. Divorce sucks. All right. Uh, another thing, too. It feels good getting on stage. I couldn't get on stage for a while uh, like I wanted to, because uh, there was some, uh, some inconsistencies that came up, some priorities, uh, like jail. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, jail's an interesting place. You meet some interesting people in jail, not like on an intellectual level, but like, uh, you stupid son of a bitch, no wonder you're in here. I'm no better than you because I'm in here with you. Uh, <laughs> I met this one guy, and uh, we we're telling each other what we got locked up for. Um, ain't none of your goddamn business why I got locked up. But um, <laughs> looks at me with a straight face, and he's like, hey, man, you know what? I'm here because I failed 32 drug tests. You ever meet somebody mispronounce some shit, and you try to uh, correct them, and they look at you and what the hell you're talking about? <laughs> I looked at him, I go, hey man, you mean 32 drug tests? He looks at me, he's like, no, Rudy, uh, it's more than one, it's Pearl. <laughs> <laughs> I told that joke in Wisconsin one time, they didn't get it. <laughs> yeah, jail's a trip, man. You have weird dreams in jail too, because you're out of your element. Duh. And uh, <laughs> I had this dream that my ex-wife picked me up from jail. And in the dream, we stopped off at a gas station. And in that dream, I robbed the gas station to go back to jail. <laughs> I wasn't going home with my ex-wife. I'm like, no, bitch, I can't stand you in this dream either. I know you're going to divorce me too, so I ain't going home with you. <laughs> it was weird. When I got divorced, my, my, my ex-wife cheated on me. I found out through Facebook. Um, yeah, that's when they yeah. just added that tag a friend feature. Why are you clapping for that shit? <laughs> it was right when they implemented like tag yourself feature, and we still had mutual friends on Facebook, 
unbeknownst to me, when that bitch was kicking it with whoever the fuck, um, I, we had mutual friends in the picture. So our mutual friend tagged themselves in the picture. Yeah, and my ex, well, at the time, my wife, was all like hugged up on this white dude. No offense, white people. But um, <laughs> she was all hugged up on him. But you ever see, like, when you break up with somebody and you see a picture of them on social media and you know they're just happy? <laughs> you know, and that terror, you want to kill everybody. <laughs> right? You want to kill everybody because, you know, and I know she's smiling a different way. She never smiled that way with me. And that's how I found out I was getting cheated on. Uh, and then she asked for a divorce. But here's the thing. I got uh, asked for, she asked to divorce me on June 24th, 2009. The reason I remember that specific date is because the very next day, June 25th, 2009, Michael, Michael Jackson, Jackson died. died. Thank you. I knew it. You know how much that messes you up as an 80s kid when you get divorced and then your icon dies the next day? I was like, man. Right. I know, right? For real, yeah. It messed me up. And when she asked for the divorce, I don't know if anybody ever happens to you, um, your organs have like a dilemma. Mine did. <laughs> it's an adventure. Uh, first of all, I'm real cocky, I'm real arrogant and, uh, arrogant, and my brain, you know, and my heart had like a little dilemma, like a little civil war going on. Because my heart broke. My heart was just like, what? And my brain was like, bitch, what? <laughs> You're divorcing me? You're crazy. Everybody loves Rudy. How come you don't? But that's cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, at the time I got divorced too, um, Kelly Clarkson made this vindictive ass album back then. <laughs> she had this one song called uh, Already Gone. There was a lyric in there that went, remember all the things we wanted. Now, I don't know about y'all, but I'm the type of person that when I'm going through some shit in life, if I hear a song that strikes a chord with me, I force myself to hear that song over and over again. Right. To get through the shit. Now, I know you see the suit. I look like a mobster, but I cry. I don't give a goddamn where I'm at either. I'll cry in Walgreens, getting liquor. I'll cry anywhere. I don't care. I have to let the tears flow and shit. Don't worry. I'll whip your ass in a heartbeat. I'll cry while I'm doing it, but I'll still do it. <laughs> I'm also a boxer. I'm a man of many talents. Um, but, uh, yeah, she had this vindictive-ass album. So when I heard that song, Already Gone, I was like, damn, it sounded like you found my ex-wife's diary and wrote music to that shit. You couldn't. Deep, Kelly. <laughs> Round of applause. Anybody here have a, a song that struck a chord with you? Yes. Okay. While, uh, while you're in a car, like driving? While you're at a McDonald's drive-thru? <laughs> yeah, this, uh, this actually happened. Um, I don't know if you ever tried to order food when you're having an emotional breakdown. <laughs> and you're high <laughs> and emotional. It's, uh, it's quite an adventure. I don't suggest you try it at all. <laughs> We're at McDonald's drive-thru and the Kelly Clarkson song keeps blaring. I'm listening to it for like a week straight. Even with our fist held high, yeah. kiss my ass, mom. <laughs> that song, I listened to that shit for like two weeks straight, crying my ass in some scotch and shit. We go to McDonald's drive-thru. And I know the dude that tried to take my order tried the hardest he could. And, uh, okay, you can cut the shit off unless you want me to have a breakdown on the stage right now. <laughs> Fuck that song. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we're at the McDonald's drive-thru, and I was really hungry. And I know he tried the best he could to take my order. So we're at McDonald's drive-thru, and I, uh, welcome McDonald's, when I take your order, fucking song comes on. Remember all the things we wanted? Sobbing bitch. I tried really hard to order my food, but I had to listen to the song at the same time. <laughs> fucking McDonald's, when I take your order. Remember all the things we wanted? Uh, yeah, um, uh, I'll take a quarter pounder and a chocolate shake. <laughs> I'm sorry, ma'am, can you repeat that? <laughs> Remember all the things we wanted? Uh, yeah, I said I'll take a quarter pounder and a chocolate shake. <laughs> ma'am, we don't serve flounder or chocolate cake. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Can I have a minute, please? Take your time. I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'm having an emotional breakdown in a McDonald's drive-thru. I'm wearing a suit. This is not cool. I turn the song off. I wipe my mascara and everything. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, sir. Uh, I'll go ahead and go through my order. 
Sh- do you remember all the things you wanted? <laughs> you know, I was just thinking, I want to know how he felt when he saw me pull up and order the, and get my food crying. Like, he must have thought, like, look, man, you don't need no quarter pounder. You need a happy meal right now. <laughs> you need to get your depressed ass out of here, for real. Yeah. 2009, that was an interesting year. Uh, <laughs> but I'm glad I got through it. It was cool. I did, uh, I did have a problem with alcohol for a long time. Anybody here ever show up drunk to a place and you weren't supposed to show up drunk to that place? <laughs> yeah, I did. Good job, sir. I will buy you a drink after the show, a non-alcoholic beverage. Um, but yeah, I did. I showed up drunk to my AA meeting. Um, yeah, but it was like the one-on-one session. I don't really do the group thing unless it's sex. So, um, yeah, uh, and the thing was, I forgot I had a meeting. My phone set the reminder, and I was already at the bar, and I had like about a dozen Coronas and like six shots of tequila. Uh, yeah, I'm Mexican and Native American, so I can throw it down. And um, so then uh, the reminder goes off. I'm at the bar with my friends, and it says AA meeting, 7 p.m., and it's like 6.43. I was like, oh, wow. I was like, okay, this is going to be interesting. I went, because if you don't go to those meetings, they still charge you. Yeah, it's like $150 an hour. Bitch, you're going to earn your money tonight. You're going to deal with all this. So I get there. Don't ask Kyle. I got there and uh, knocking the door. Remember, I'm drunk as hell. Lisa answers the door. That was my therapist. Hey, Rudy, how you doing? Hey, Lisa. How you doing, baby? How are you feeling? I'm feeling quite groovy. I have a question. Uh, why is your office located uh, right across from the sh- bar I just walked out of? <laughs> Excuse me? Excuse me? Uh, right now, I think you're being uh, 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 hypothetical. Uh, Rudy, I think the word you're looking for is hypocritical. Well, bitch, you're being both. Because right now, hypothetically, you're being hypocritical. Okay, you know what, Rudy? We can't do this. Uh, I can't treat you in this state. Do we have to go to Wisconsin or Indiana? This is a union thing, Lisa. Okay, it's fine. Whatever. I tried walking out. Lisa got all mad and shit. And I'm leaving, and she yells out, Rudy, where do you think you're going? I'm going home. You don't want to see me? I'm leaving. How are you going to go home? Okay, here's the problem, Lisa. You got those diplomas and degrees on the wall and you still don't know shit. Uh, maybe you need to go back to college and take some more tests. <laughs> but unbeknownst to you, I don't have to stand up to drive. <laughs> and I drove my ass home that night. I don't remember how, but I had to drive my home. Uh, a little bit more information about me. I have alopecia. Does anyone know what that is? Damn it, everybody knows who that shit is now. I used to do that joke like five years ago. Didn't the motherfucker know about it? Now y'all know about it. What, what is it? Whoever, I couldn't see. Cause like, what is it? Okay, well, does anybody know why it happens? Okay, cool, y'all know. Okay, no, it's like an autoimmune like, disorder or whatever. It's basically like God blessed me but gave me no eyebrows and said good luck. <laughs> so, that, <laughs> But yeah, it, uh, yeah, I'm bald as hell. But you know what? It, uh, it impacts me in ways that y'all might take for granted, like social media, uh, in particular Snapchat. This is why there's a filter on there. In order to activate the filter, it says raise your eyebrows. (laughs) (laughs) You have no idea how frustrating it is when you have your little girl next to you and her filter activates and her puppy dog ears pop up and my shit's not working (laughs) and I'm trying really hard Like, I'm dedicated, and we're in public. (laughs) And people think I'm going crazy because I'm like. (laughs) (laughs) Fuck Snapchat. So now I own my daughter a new phone. Um, I just got out of a relationship a few months ago. Uh, I didn't, I, it was weird. I was uh, in a relationship with a really bad alcoholic, which was weird because I stopped drinking. I didn't stop drinking, I'll be honest. 
but I just wasn't drinking like she was. I don't know if anybody here been in a relationship with an alcoholic, like a really bad alcoholic. It's weird because you're dealing like with two different personalities. We would argue over the dumbest shit. Every time I broke up with her, I had to re-break up with her the next morning because she couldn't remember. <laughs> it was yeah, man. It was it was it was difficult. Like we'd argue over dumb shit because I live with her and she would make us dinner, but she was drunk when she made the shit. So I get home, and I'm looking at the bowl of what she made. I'm just like, uh, babe, what what are we having tonight? She's all slurring because she gets drunk off white wine. Because apparently she's a pussy ass alcoholic and gets drunk off white wine. <laughs> right there, you go, girl. Yeah. So then I'm looking at, I'm like, hey, uh, what are, what are we having here? I don't know what's going on. Okay, you know what? I've been slaving over the stage all day. This is pasta with vodka sauce. Uh, bitch, this is noodles and liquor. Um, I don't see any sauce in here at all. <laughs> I'm not eating this shit at all. Yeah, that was that was special. <laughs> Uh, what else? Uh, I smoke weed. Anybody here smoke weed? Don't lie. Okay, cool. You smoke weed. I got high. Like I don't smoke it like all 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 the time. Every now and then I smoke a little bit just to relax and listen to some jazz or something. But uh, I smoke some some stuff called Kush. Yeah, right. That's exactly the reaction you should have to that, especially when you're not like a seasoned pot smoker like my cousins are. Uh, I smoke that stuff. It didn't hit me right away though, and uh, so. When uh, I left my cousin's house, they're like, nah, man, why don't you sit out and chill and just hang out here? I'm like, nah, man, I got priorities, motherfucker. I need to go home and go to work in the morning. <laughs> and it didn't hit me until I got in the car like a block away. You ever had your car turn into a transformer while you're in it? <laughs> and it made the sounds, too, like... <laughs> that was an adventure. That, it was really special that night. It was weird. Uh, I got to the stoplight. I'm like, okay, I'm going to make it home. I only live like two miles away. Got to the stoplight. Light turned red. All these cars are going around me, honking, everything. I'm like, what is going on? I'm paying attention to the light. I focus. I'm nowhere near a stoplight. <laughs> I'm like two blocks away. I'm like, oh, my God, what did I smoke? Son of a bitch. I'm like, okay, I just got to make it to the next stoplight, and I'll be okay, and I'll be home. I get to the next stoplight. Turns red. I stop. I swear to God. Remember Lord of the Rings when them tree people took them big, long-ass steps? That's what that stoplight did. I got to the stoplight, not tonight, Rudy, and just kept walking. I was like, oh, my God. Anyway, that's my time, ladies and gentlemen.